How two farmer boys beat the government in creating the first airplane. The unexpected. The New York Times completely underestimated how long it would take for anyone to be able to fly in 1903, believing it would take one to 10 million years. Even the Wright brothers didn't think it would happen in their lifetime. Wilbur, the elder brother, lamented after a failed flight, will men ever fly again in a thousand years? Despite all the skepticism, the dream came true. The Wright brothers made their first powered flight above the Elder Banks of North Carolina two years later. That lasted less than a minute. Two years later, they had improved their flying machine to the point where it could fly 25 miles. This is the account of how they made one of history's most significant innovations. The Wright brothers had a unique upbringing in Dayton, Ohio, where their mother Susan dedicated her life to raising her five children and their father Milton served as a bishop. She was the one who encouraged her interest in engineering. The Wright brothers. Milton and Susan instilled in their kids the idea that the world is an unwelcoming place full of temptations. They believed that their close-knit families were their only true source of support. When Wins were born after Wilbur and before Orville died in infancy, or when Milton's preaching placed him on the road frequently and he'd bring back modest toys for his kids, it would help them deal with significant problems. He once brought home a little helicopter that was based on the design of French aviation pioneer Rao. Orville Wilbur drew this illustration. Orville was enthralled by the toy and grew to love flying and aeronautics. Wilbur was a gifted learner who did well in school. He was going to Yale, and he wanted to be a teacher. However, he experienced a life-changing accident in high school. He lost his front when a hockey stick from another player struck him in the face. Nevertheless, his wounds weren't serious. He withdrew and decided against going to college. He devoted a lot of his time to caring for his unwell mother, who died of tuberculosis at home a few years later. Even though his ideas fell through, this would be credit with creating Wilbur because it gave him the freedom to pursue other passions that eventually led him to the airplane. The Wright brothers were born and raised in Dayton during a time of great change. It was developing into a manufacturing and industrial hub making it the ideal location for two successful brothers. The learning process. At the height of the bicycle mania, Wilbur Orville established several neighborhood newspapers and launched bike stores. The money they made from renting, manufacturing, and selling bikes was used to support their aviation research. From bicycles to airplanes was a logical progression. Both require an awareness of balance, the ability to maintain control, the use of lightweight yet durable structures, and the capacity to overcome wind resistance. The Wright brothers learn how to manage an airplane and roll by manipulating their kita. Building and flying a kita is one thing. Flying a big glider with a person inside is quite another. They had to learn how to ascend and descend which involved managing the center of pressure's movement. Any upward or downward movement of the aircraft would be counted by pressure on the elevator. It was crucial to design the wings for. Even though most wings had a flawless arc, different design was chosen by the Wrights. They increased the depth of the curve and moved the curve's highest point closer to the leading edge. They contend that by doing so, the center of pressure would move less and the aircraft would become more stable and maneuverable. The Wrights traveled to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, a little fishing community infamous for its fierce mosquitoes and severe winds, to test their glider. Never giving up. They promised to try once again with a larger glider. They made their way back to Kitty Hawk in 1901 with a glider that was twice as large as their first one, only to depart disappointed that the larger glider's performance was worse than that of its predecessor because of control issues. 
The brothers Rape were able to obtain a lot of flying experience in 1902 thanks to their glider. Between 700 and 1,000 flights were performed by them between September and October of that year. Some even reached heights of 183 meters or 600 feet. They had previously rid off the idea of creating a powered plane as being beyond their lifespan, but their accomplishment gave them the confidence and bravery to attempt. Wilbur was ecstatic at their development. He claimed that the new machine is a vast advance over everything. We now think that the flying problem is getting closer to a solution because everything has become so much more satisfactory since anyone has developed. Their glider was a physical representation of the aerodynamic stability and structural needs for human flight. In the summer of 1903, Orville and Wilbur were preoccupied with conquering this last significant challenge. The only thing it was missing was a propulsion mechanism to keep it flying. The Wrights created their first plane, which they referred to as the Flyer, using a design that was inspired by their key tech. They made advantage of the information they learned from their wind tunnel tests. To support the weight of an engine propeller, they had to expand the wing area. Enhanced structural sturdiness, they created their own 12 horsepower engine because no gasoline engine manufacturer could, at least not on a reasonable budget, match their power to weight specifications. The two sizable propellers at the back of the aircraft were turned by the power plant. They returned to Kitty Hawk in September 1903 with the intention of flying their airplane having used what amounted to bike chains to connect the engine to the propellers. However, technical difficulties and bad weather caused them to lose confidence. They underestimated the weight of the flyer by 125 pounds. They were fortunate in that their propellers produced 50% more thrust than anticipated, which they felt would still make up for the additional weight. Were they insane in 1903 to try to fly an airplane? There was only one way to find out. A final success. To decide which brother would make the initial try, Wilbur won, they flipped a coin. Even though the flyer was barely in the air for three and a half seconds, Wilbur was certain that it flew. The matter is now clear. A final triumph. They took off again just before the flight on December 17th after the flyer had been repaired for three days. Orville was at the controls. After shaking hands for a while, crew members couldn't help but notice how tightly the two brothers gripped each other's hands. Wilbur approached us and instructed us to smile, say hi, and clap our hands to make us feel better about her than to appear depressed. This time, the plane rose 852 feet, 260 meters, in 59 seconds before being damaged by a gust of wind. The flights in 1903 were brief and direct. Wilbur and Orville improved their design with two more aircraft in 1904. And in 1905, they received permission to fly over local cow pasture only a few miles outside of Dayton named Huffman Prairie to demonstrate that they could fully control it by turning and flying greater distances. Consequently, they were spared the exhausting journey to Kitty Hawk. They were not charged by the owner. He just asked that before leaving, they make sure the animals were out of the road, not to disturb or harm the underprivileged. They completed their first full circuit on September 20, 1904. The flight covered more than 4,000 feet, 1,200 meters in one minute and 36 seconds. By the fall of 1905, they were regularly conducting multi-minute flights. Wilbur once covered a total distance of 24 and a half miles or 39 kilometers by circling the field 30 times in 39 minutes. The Wright brothers didn't tell the public about their invention until 1908. They made sure to get their flying machine patent in numerous European and American countries. After Wilbur's first public flight in France, French pilot Leon summed up the supremacy of the Wright machine by using the phrase, New Sump, we have lost. <laughs>
The Wright brothers came to represent the notion of overnight success. The Wright brothers were welcomed back to America with much fanfare, which included a celebration in their hometown. They would have preferred to return to work discreetly, but they were unable to do so. This is how former President William Howard Taft expressed it. You made this discovery by using a strategy that we Americans like to think is uniquely American. You stayed focused on the task at hand until you had finished what you had set out to do. The victory. They gained notoriety in the fall of 1909 when a million New Yorkers watched Wilbur traverse the city's skyline while attending events commemorating Henry Hudson's arrival in New York 300 years earlier. The main driving force for the development of aviation was World War I compared to the military's employment of observational balloons during the American Civil War. Aircraft were unquestionably an improvement. The Wright brothers had to demonstrate their aircraft's viability to secure a contract with the U.S. military. On September 17, 1908, a propeller flew off the plane while Orville and passenger Lieutenant Thomas Salvage were on it, tragically ending one flight experiment. The first person to perish in a powered aircraft was a Lieutenant Suffrage, who was killed when the aircraft nosedived and crashed, badly wounding Oroville. The flyer's propeller had a stress crack, which is what caused the crash. The owners fixed the fault by redesigning the flyer, and they eventually sold it to the Army for $30,000. The brothers founded the appropriate company in 1910 and started production a range of designs. Wilbur wouldn't have much time to bask in his success, though. He passed away from typhoid in 19, well, two years later. He had just turned 45. His family thinks that working too much was a factor in his demise. After filing litigation for patent infringement with his brother, Wilbur had grown weary and stressed out. They feel that because they invented the plane, they should receive credit and payment for their service to society. And it seems that it wasn't only about the money, it was also about principle. But his younger sibling lived another 36 years. Orville spent the rest of his life serving on boards and committees related to aeronautics. In 1948, a heart attack claimed his life. The Wright brothers were single when they were 76 years old. They were so dedicated to their task that sculptures commemorating their incredible conquest appeared almost everywhere. It was the Wright brothers, conceived by genius, accomplished by unquestionable resolve and unshakable trust, 